excited for today? Um, I'd like to welcome you all to the August 19, 2014 meeting of the Manhattan Transportation and Parking Commission. My name is Ryan O'Donnell. I'm the Ward 3 City Councilor and also the Chair of the Commission. And I note that there is a quorum present, so I will call the meeting to order. And the first thing I'll do is note the um, audio and video recording of this meeting. Um, Mr. Hargraves so is also um, volunteer to take minutes. And as is our custom, we'll start and introduce ourselves going around the room, starting with our vice chair. Introduce yourselves? I'm sorry. Yeah, if we would say our names. Uh, I'm Lisa Klein, the City Council for Ward 7, and the vice chair of this commission. Dave Pomerantz, Director of Central Services. Ben Huntley, Director of Public Works. James Lowenthal, citizen member and member of the Bicycle Pedestrian Committee. Co Harder, Board of Health Representative. Deb Bruce, Planning Board. Wayne Scheiden, Director of Planning and Sustainability. Okay, thank you very much. Um, before we begin um, <clears throat> our agenda, we start with the public comment period. Um, this is a, a chance for the public to speak on any subject they wish. We try to limit it to about three minutes each so that we're fair to everyone who's come and um, hopes to speak today. I like to say just a, a brief few words about what to expect after you after you talk. It's sometimes the case that uh, residents will come with requests or concerns and normally the way we do it is we don't engage in a back and forth. <coughs> From time to time the commission may ask questions and there may be some limited back and forth, but um, mostly this is time to express your opinion. So if you don't find complete resolution to your issue that you may have brought with you today, um, you should know that uh, I and other members of the commission fully intend to follow up with you, and uh, we can have a continuing conversation after this after this meeting. Um, I don't believe there's a sign-up sheet, so everyone is welcome to scramble and fight to be the first person to present to this August body. This August body, I love it. If you state your name and address for the record, that would be helpful. I am Jack Pezzanelli, and my address is 47C Hatchfield Street. And here's a little map I just that, that kind of goes along with what I'm going to say. I hope I made enough. I don't know. Hi. Could you spell your last name? Sure. It's P E Z A N E L L I. Okay. So I'm here to, to talk about the horrendous traffic situation on Hatfield Street, this, uh, specifically the Route 9 on Hatfield Street, um, where the cement factory is located. And um, over the last five years, traffic is like quadrupled up there. And uh, most of the traffic seems to be trucks, big trucks, uh, mostly 10-wheel dump trucks and the supersized dump trucks going from construction sites to the cement factory back and forth all day. Cement trucks themselves with, you know, the, the belly that swirls like this, back and forth from the cement uh, all, all day long. And then also, mo this, this whole big thing seems to have started when Walmart was installed in the King Street Plaza maybe five or so years ago. We've got the Walmart trucks, the big ones. I mean, you know, the Coca-Cola truck that, you know, keeps, you don't see the end of it for like five minutes. And so all of this has really gotten to the point where I, shy me, is here to petition you guys to, to, to listen to what I have to say about solving the problem. Mm -hmm. Ryan and I have talked about this a little bit, and, and the solution that we seem to have come to is that we can create an annex very easily. Um, if you see on the map, there's a little four-way stop uh, indi indicated by the little diamond right down there, cement flat being on the lower left, and Hatfield Street going all the way up to Ridge Road. My house, number 47, sitting there innocuously almost on the corner of Terrace. And that's where the traffic problem really is, right there on Hatfield Street. Well, we can put up a sign that say all trucks left on North, at North Elm Street. This is a street where nobody lives. There's no residents. Perfect. And if we can have all the trucks go that way, they can all get to Bridge Road, which is where they're going to be going pretty much anyways. You see. And also on the other side, trucks coming the other way to the cement factory. 
can be diverted up Bridge Road to the next left, which is also North Elm Street, down to where they need to get to. This, I think, is a, a really cost. It doesn't cost anything just to put a few signs and divert the trucks a little bit, and I think it'll really, um, you know, improve the living. You know, uh, on Hatfield Street, there's the answer. To this um, there's a friend of mine who, who lives next door to me. He's a builder. He says that the trucks, the big trucks that go by on our street, are literally damaging the foundations of the houses because there's so many of them. At the beginning of building season, which I'm guessing is somewhere around early spring, when the foundations are being poured, it's insane up there. I mean, there's like 50, 60 trucks back and forth during the day. Towards now, this time of year, you know, things have slowed down, the foundations have been poured. It's less, but it's still a lot. From 8 to 12 in the morning, it's back and forth. Then there's the lunch break, but he eats as more caffeine gets back in the trucks, and off we go again until about 3 in the afternoon. So that's what I'm proposing, is to create that little annex, and I'm thinking that it'll really put a bite in the problem. I don't think it'll solve it entirely, but you know, it'll, it'll keep the trucks away from the houses and provide them with a route uh, upon which there's no residence, there's no houses there. It's right across the street. It runs right through the center there. Well, thank you very much. In this case, um, the issue you brought up is on our agenda for discussion later in the meeting. Okay. Um, so, because of that, if there's any questions that this commission has um, for our, our guests, it might be appropriate to ask at this at this stage. If not, we can just continue the discussion when we reach that point. Everybody, yeah. Uh, just, when you talk about the number of trucks on a, on a daily basis, has anybody, yourself included, ever done any counts? Well, I, 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 <laughs> well, not the formal counts, but informal okay. counts. I would say that during the high point of the, the building season, it's about more than 10 an hour. So you figure uh, how many hours in the day? Six, mm -hmm. seven? And they're big trucks. I mean, the biggest dump trucks that shake the house. And that's one of my biggest concerns is literally it's, it's affecting this foundation of the house is there. You know? and right now it's less because, you know, like I say, I guess the projects are in a different stage where they're not pouring the foundation. So it's a little less. It's still a lot, but it's less. It's a lot. Thank you. Both ways. Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you very much for your sure. comment. We'll get to this later in the agenda. I should stay. Right. Uh, you're certainly welcome to if you wish. Okay. Yep. Hi, good afternoon. Um, my name is Cynthia Cochan, and I own a duplex at 1012 Bay Avenue, the heavy truck traffic street. Oh, your street. It's, um, it's been, my, we've owned the house for quite a while, and about 10 years ago, the front steps walked away from the front of the house and cracked. And during the same period of time, my, my mother, who was living there, called and said, Cynthia, it's cold in here. There's no heat. So I came home, and the fuse box had walked away from the electrical connection. So $2,025 later, I had front steps, and we had heat in the house. We put in a new circuit breaker. And of course, um, I said to my mom, well, are we going to give the city the bill? And she, the old-fashioned <coughs> lady, said, no, no, Cynthia, we'll take care of it. We'll take care of it. So I took care of it. Well, uh, two weeks ago, when I woke up and went downstairs, the ceiling, a third of the ceiling, was laying on the bed and the floor. It had fallen from the attachments it has on the, on the ceiling. And it's a square um, composite tiles that were on the So a third of my ceiling was sitting on the floor. And <clears throat> in addition to that, the pointing and the front steps is, is um, eroding again, and they need to be replaced. The steps happened first, you know, or I was aware of it first, so I sent a, um, a letter to City Hall asking them to reimburse me for the steps. 
I have an estimate and I want to be reimbursed. Well, of course, the insurance company's answer was no, we don't do that. Well, the insurance company for the ceiling looked at their um, adjuster came and it's $1,645 was their estimate to replace the tiles on the ceiling. So I'm here to tell you about this problem about the truck traffic. Um, all, everyone that came in and looked or talked about it, the opinion was that it was a vibration from the truck traffic. Now, the walls are cracking, the pointing of the cellar is starting to fall. And the house settled 110 or 120 years ago. It's, what's happening now is from the migration. I'm the last house before Bridge Street, so that the truck traffic coming south starts breaking just before my house. <coughs> and there are approximately 150 trucks a day that use the street. And when Angela was our counselor, we started working with um, Coke. We had a Coke a couple of times. We decided a $300 fine ticket should be given to any of the drop trucks that use the avenue. It's an illegal street, but I haven't seen a, I haven't seen a difference. I haven't seen a, an abatement of the truck traffic. And it's probably because GPS shows Day Avenue as an um, entry street into the industrial park. So my, the only thing I can think of is um, making the street one way south. Because um, my house is just falling apart. <coughs> Unless you'd like to buy it from me. And then I'll go somewhere where there aren't any trucks. Thank you very much, Ms. Koshin. Uh, any questions from the commission? Sorry, just to understand, um, if it were one way south, wouldn't you still have the same problem with the trucks uh, breaking as they come to your house? That's true. So, uh, You're right. I'm not sure I understand what the advantage to having it one way would be. Well, it could, you could better you could block it off at the top of the street. The coke could direct them, those that used to come in through the street, to exit through the industrial park. Going north. Right. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. Could you spell your last name for me? Mm -hmm. It's K-O-C-H-A-N. But um, I don't know any other um, possibilities. Um, I have only seen a police car once or twice <coughs> at the top of this of Day Avenue to ticket the trucks. Now, if we have 150 trucks a day and it's $300 a ticket, that would be nice play around money for somebody. <laughs> Walk around. So I don't know why. You know, we have the bicycle cops now, or during the war weather. And just to have them sit there for, at the top of the bottom of the street for an hour a day, they're bound to catch a few. Mm -hmm. And you're right about the length of the trucks. They are yeah. just... The other thing that happens is that the, the um, Day Avenue or, um, um, near Bridge Street on the last house, the people across from us park their cars, they have about 13 vehicles, and they, they park all along the street, and they park sometimes beyond them, don't park beyond this sign thing, and it causes a serious problem of... Um, Making because the trucks will still make that turn and come hell or high water. So the other problem is to maybe move the from here to the corner sign back so we don't have that problem. And you know the school bus picks up the kids there in the morning. And my concern is the kids being safe. And it's not safe to have these huge trucks barreling around the corner when you have seven or eight kids waiting for the school bus. So I would appreciate two things. One, paying for this damage that's just been done. I won't make it retroactive to 10 years ago. And the other is to find some solution for us to, to abate the truck truck. Well, thank you very much again. Um, any other questions from the commission? Long-time observers of this commission will, will note that truck traffic on Day Avenue and Lincoln Avenue is our favorite subject, and 
um, bring it up almost every meeting, and um, yeah, nothing is done. And um, it is a continuing um, and multifaceted problem. Uh, and we will continue to work. Um, further public comment. Good afternoon. Um, no, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to clarify the process. I wondered if now is the only time for public comment, or as the agenda items come up, do you take comment from the public? We generally don't um, refer public comment come in the beginning unless you're <coughs> placed on the agenda. Okay. And, and so you're certainly welcome to. Okay, so I'll speak my piece now. My name is George Kohout, K O H O U T, um, and I live down on State Street near the, near the bike path. And I'd like to speak on two items, if I could, on the coming up on the agenda. One is the Leeds Hotel Bridge. Um, I was a member of the Leeds Civic Association for a long time and a past member of the Community Preservation Act. So um, I've worked for quite a while um, in support of restoring the, the hotel bridge. Um, so I think it's a really, as far as the purview of this board, I think it's a crucial piece of um, the transportation network the multimodal transportation network in Holyoke. Um, I think the biggest reason, perhaps, for saving it is the historical context, um, but I think the secondary reason is the, the transportation piece, which allows both um, pedestrians and bicyclists to, to use that path and access conservation areas, water streets, um, and many areas um, near New Sandy Beach, so they don't have to go down into that busy roadway of uh, um, the area that goes up towards through Leeds Village. Um, we've worked for quite a while with the DPW to try to get this engineering report. I know it's coming coming up soon, and I just want to let folks know that the, the issue of Leeds Bridge is just not a kind of a Leeds in my backyard issue, but I think it has a larger context for the city of Northampton and the whole region um, when it comes to both the historical and the transportation area. So, um, I think there are other boards that will be working on this, and I'll come and voice my uh, kind of support of them too. Um, and I know more activity is happening from an interested group of people in Leeds, and, uh, um, and I'm sure they'll be working hard to keep it moving forward. The second issue I'd like to, like to talk about is not exactly on the agenda, um, but it has to do with another uh, project in Leeds, which is the extension of the rail trail. And I was able to meet early this morning with the subcommittee of this committee, the pedestrian and bicyclist committee, I think. Um, and I, I spoke briefly about my support of uh, putting a hard cover, a um, macadam cover, on the extension of the path when it, it moves towards the Hainville area. Um, I would also like to say that the existing um, coverage on that portion of the bicycle path, which is TRG, um, is really a disservice to the community, not just the bicyclists, but other people who use the rail trail. Um, it has not held up over a period of time. Um, it's, it prevents, I think, any thought of the DPW maintaining it during the winter or tough seasons. Um, it doesn't get mowed or plowed um, purposely because it is TRG, so it's neglected. Um, I think it was a great experiment. Was it eight or 10 years ago when the leech, the leech path was extended? And it was the first time, I believe, on the whole network of trails here, whether Jammers, Hadley, East Hampton, that TRG was used. Um, and I think it really needs, it's time to revisit that. I know there aren't funds to do everything at once, that the funds will be prioritized on the extension of the path, but I hope this committee would look hard at uh, really um, making that portion of the path the same as the other a multimodal pass in the city, which is a hard kind of service. Okay. Let me see. Maybe I'll pull out a third comment. No, that's enough to the time. Thank you very much for your service. Okay. Thank you. Any, any questions? Right. So, you clarify TRG. What TRG? Is that uh, TRG question. Would, would you? Trap rock. Trap rock. Trap rock. I got two of them. <laughs> Trap rock. Trap rock. And the notion is that I think it was going to be hard packed, much like a macadam, but then still be porous to allow water and, and friendlier to animals, perhaps, and, and by other bipeds to walk on. Um, but over time, what happens is it settles and it degrades and it erodes in ways that weren't anticipated that macadam really doesn't. So it hasn't held up. So that was never meant to hold up, George. That was the first type of stone dust path built in the state. 
Wow. And it was done the wrong recipe. And it was not surprising to me that it didn't hold up. Okay, the next, is there anyone else for public comment? And just to be clear, uh, Mr. Kohau mentioned the agenda. You may speak on any item, whether it's not, whether it's on the agenda or not. Okay, thank you. <laughs> My name is Deb Jacobs, J-A-C-O-B-S, and I uh, live um, in Leeds up on the hill. And I um, would like um, to encourage you to uh, look favorably on the Hotel Bridge project. Um, it, um, in a way, reminds me of in the Lawrence Strike, where the women's shop for bread and roses. And for me, um, the bridge represents kind of bread and roses. That um, it's it's a really um, important way to uh, get across uh, to Water Street to access Roberts Hill. Um, it makes a, a a very nice loop for many of us. And um, historically, it's um, it, it's a really wonderful you know uh, it's a wonderful bridge. And I, I think that Leeds um, is very fortunate in that it has a real sense of community and its history. And I think this is an important um, piece for, for many of us. And it, it's, um, it's not just bluff. It's, it's, it's a real part of, um, of who we are. And there was a wonderful um, historian, Jim Parsons, who passed away some time ago. And um, he got a lot of us interested in history. And, and that's still continuing. And I would, I would urge you to, um, to think about the bridge. I know that um, the money is is very tight, and um, it needs a great deal of work. But it, it also needs a great deal to, to many of us, and I think um, ultimately to to the city of Morgantown. So I, I would, I'm, I'm really pleased that my counselor um, has brought it up, and I thank you. Um, I also, um, I've spoken before about um, my preference for service on the, on the road, which I know is going to be put off, but I would like to just simply say that um, what we had been asking for, those of us who wanted a ground path, was something using the um, structured soil that really cements it in like they have up at the DAR. There's a, a trail up there that gives you a better sense of what we were looking for. And I would agree that the current surface is is difficult, but I still um, I still think it has some, some very um, good things. And I, I want to thank um, Mr. Huntley also, who um, we uh, saw them uh, come and mow uh, this past month, which um, was very much appreciated. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, is there further public comment? Anyway. My name is Craig Delapena. That's spelled D E L L A, capital P E N N A. It's two words. Um, I live at 62 Chestnut Street. And I've heard a couple things here tonight that I want to speak about, in addition to why I'm really here. But um, the Hotel Bridge is also, I'll echo that, is very important. Uh, I'm involved in historic bridge renovation projects. Historic bridges throughout the Northeast. One of my favorite projects is in Northfield, Massachusetts. The Shell Bridge, and if you go to Shell Bridge with a C-H-E-L-L-S-C-H-E-L-L bridge.org, it's one of the best websites for historic bridge renovation projects. And uh, I support the Hotel Bridge remediation. The, uh, as George mentioned about the st uh, TRG, I guess TRG is a better word for it, a better acronym, because it's not stone dust. It was that, that path was built shortly after Mass Highway came out at a conference about, a, about how bad stone dust was and didn't work. And it was ineffective. It was actually not true. Most rail trails in the United States are built with stone dust. <coughs> It's very unusual for them to be built with asphalt, except in Massachusetts. <coughs> and there are some paths built with stone dust done correctly. The closest one you will find to here is in West Boylston, Massachusetts, 
on the Mass Central Rail Trail, which is being built out that will connect Northampton to Boston in eight more years. The path that was built in Leeds was not done to that specification. So it is not what people thought was coming. It is disappointing. I would agree with George on that. And now I'll talk about Chestnut Street, where I live. And uh, ironically, in the, between the time we had a meeting, the group of neighbors up there to talk about traffic calming, Everybody was getting alarmed because it was getting too scary up there with this high speed traffic. And at our end, um, talking about the bike path right next, actually eight feet from my house. My house sits eight feet from the oldest municipally built rail trail, which happens to be in the Florence village of Northampton. Oldest municipally built in New England. And in fact, talking about shaking the house from the trucks, the two truck comments here. My house was built so close to the railroad that the railroad officials felt sorry for the original owners and they reinforced all the plaster ceilings with lath strips and furring strips and that wasn't attractive so they put up canvas ceilings thinking that the house is going to shake from the proximity of the trains, the reinforced ceilings will hold but the flexible canvas ceilings will flex and never crack. And we still have one to this day in our house. But the bicycles and pedestrians don't shake the house. <laughs> but I'm sure the trucks do down on day out. Um, but ironically, since we had this meeting in July 14th to bring together neighbors who had never met each other really in the length of that street to talk about the bad things that were going on in there, people were getting upset. And they started staggering cars, parking on the street to slow traffic down. Some of the cars, the resident, the patrons or uh, occupants of the cars, they would get out and key the doors or key the sides of the cars that happened to be parking, staggering on Chestnut Street. And Kathy and I living there and holding our breath every day, once a day, there's almost an accident with somebody at the bike path and the Chestnut Street. And between the meeting, we held in mid-July, and here I am today, solo, I should add, if anybody's watching this, the, uh, there was a crash on Chestnut Street with the uh, bike path rail trail. And uh, the woman had some facial injuries, but she wasn't badly hurt, and the people uh, who hit her were shocked and, you know, what is the solution? Well, I, see, I see different grades of speed tables here in the city. I see shadow ones, almost ghost speed tables. I don't call them speed bumps. Matter of fact, James, you can have this. Speed lumps, speed humps, speed bumps. Speed bumps is a phrase from the 70s. We don't talk about speed bumps anymore. But, um, we need a speed table at the rail trail. We need a mid-block crossing neck down somewhere down the street. And, and other sort of creative fixes here. We'd love to be part of the traffic calming that's taking place around the city. We noticed that. I didn't bring the formalized document to fill out tonight, but we will get it here in the next week or so, and we'd love to be on the agenda for the next time. And maybe have some chilling stars of the near misses on Chestnuts. Oh, yeah. So. Well, thank, thank you very you much. Time. And we look forward to receiving your traffic calming application. Are there any questions at this time about these buildings? Okay. I have a question. Well, Isn't there some construction happening right now on the roadway on Chestnut Street? In the roadway. In the roadway. Yep. Is it done? Thursday it starts. I think Wednesday or Thursday is paving day up there. And another question, has uh, the DPW or, or uh, the Pine Valley Planning Commission, as far as anybody here knows, done uh, speeding and traffic counts on Chestnut Street? I'm aware. We're the end of Chestnut Street towards Pine. Pine Valley Planning Commission is going to study there as we speak. Mass DOT, in fact, all DOTs have a hidden page on their websites. It has all the ADTs, average daily trips, speed counts of all the busier roads in every state, in every community in the state. 
in, in Chestnut Street, I believe, shows up at around 2,500, 3,500 cars a day. I think that's, I think that's somewhere in the number. I have another question. Um, I see a list of uh, signatures here. Are you submitting this as a traffic calming request? Is that the intent? Well, I don't have the full request yet, James. I don't have the formalized cover letter, right. cover page. Um, I have pieces of it here, and I'll be back with the complete package. Okay. Thanks. Great. Um, Mr. And thank you for organizing that and um, bringing that issue up in your neighborhood and putting it into an application form for us to. Any other questions? No? Okay. Uh, further public comment from anybody? No? Okay. Going once, going twice. Well, with that, we'll launch into our agenda and we'll start with uh, approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, is there a motion to put this on the floor? So, if I'll make some motions, a second? Seconds. Uh, any discussion or changes to the minutes? I would just like to thank Mr. Hargreaves again for his superb job in taking the minutes. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, I, I agree. These are supremely ridiculously detailed in a good way. <laughs> and they are just in every, in every respect outstanding. Um, so I, I thank you too. And Mr. Hargreaves and I talked before the meeting about a minor change, um, which I'll explain. Um, when we um, when we approve this is item eleven item oh, excuse me I thought I had the right item but I did wrong bear with me for a second. This is item ten. Um, just when we. This is very technical. When we made a motion to add our name to an, an ordinance before voting it out, there was just some confusion about uh, which motion came first, and we just want to, Mr. Hargraves will make an edit so, so that it clarifies that we first amended our name onto the ordinance before then approving it to send it to the, the council. Both votes are One tiny little last thing, also, if you're done with that. Shero is, you got that. No, we were talking about it before the meeting. It's how to spell it. It's spelled with a W on the end, like an arrow. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, <you get> right. <laughs> Is this something that's in the on the on the surface, the road surface? Yes, it's an arrow that says <coughs> share the road. That's why it's a ship. <coughs> <coughs> and was my clarification clear, or was it as clear as mine? Any other discussion or changes to minutes? Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Um, so it passes. Just one is uh, uh, Two. I abstain. Sorry. As long as there are no more than two abstentions. How many do we how many abstentions do we have? That's okay. We're still here. We're here for quite a Yes, but uh, the, I just want to make sure we have six affirmative votes because that's what's required to pass anything. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, so, yeah, so the, the, the ordinance that established this commission says that six people will be a quorum, but that six affirmative votes will be necessary to make any motion. Uh, so, some, somebody who wasn't here has to. Uh, attest to the, the likely validity of the minutes. And you'll fall on that sort of thing. I trust you. All right, so the minutes have been approved uh, 6 um, 0 with two abstentions. Okay, thank you very much. I'll uh, move on now to item 6. Any brief announcements or updates from commission members? It's always a popular one, though. <laughs> Maybe we just won't do that again. Um, Reports from committees. Uh, parking committee, uh, Ms. Mott is not here today. Is there anyone who would like to provide a report? They haven't met since the last meeting. Oh, is that right? And I don't know what the, I don't know where you left in terms of parking principles. 
Yeah, yeah we took no action, action on parking principles okay. last time, and especially this month. I suggest we wait. To, that's okay. Okay. Um, bike and Ped Committee. Sure, the Bicycle and Pedestrian Committee met this morning, uh, including with uh, a fair number of the members of the, the public here today who were uh, there partly to uh, to weigh in about uh, the Leeds Rail Trail extension. Uh, and uh, to reiterate, uh, while the Bicycle and Pedestrian Committee came out with a recommendation for a paved surface a year ago, we did that at the time uh, knowing that that, uh, or believing and, uh, and uh, hoping that that was not in any way a final decision, um, uh, but just our committee's recommendation. Since then, there's been a lot of discussion about it. We've discussed it at almost every meeting we have. Um, and uh, my understanding is that the city will be hiring an engineer uh, to look at the different surfaces and weigh in from an engineer's perspective. And, um, and that there will be lots more room for public <coughs> discussion about that as well. Um, uh, Wayne Fiden shared the news that the city did get a permanent <coughs> easement from the railroad for the underpass, the railroad underpass that will connect the Man and Rail Trail north south and the Water Trail east uh, west, or the um, North Hampton, New Haven, and uh, Mass Central Rail Trails. Um, and uh, that will, uh, as soon as it's uh, <coughs> partner uh, national grid uh, paperwork is done, um, then that project will go out to bid uh, for 2015 construction, which will be after the railroad itself is finished and the trains are running. Um, Pleasant Street um, has some uh, activity, but uh, it hinges partly on a grant that is uh, pending. Um, the issue is um, accommodations for uh, pedestrians on sidewalks and crosswalks uh, and um, curb extensions and things like that uh, to make Pleasant Street more uh, pedestrian friendly. Um, there was some discussion about what would be the, um, the next. Uh, how to prioritize possible rail trail projects or trail projects in the uh, city's ongoing trail network. And uh, we reached um, a consensus in support of the idea that uh, the, the next top priority project would be uh, most likely uh, one connecting um, uh, Route 66 and the Manning Rail Trail. So basically the Ice Pond uh, trails to the Manning Rail Trail, um, among several other options that we're also interested in. Uh, there's discussion about um, uh, construction of a, an off-ramp from the existing uh, rail trail near Look Park uh, at the uh, Look Restaurant in Lucas, um, where there is a fairly heavily used and heavily eroded steep trail cut down in Bank, um, which is actually threatening the stability of the trail itself. Uh, and there was discussion, um, there was some discussion about uh, something that will be coming up, I think, on the agenda for us today. Uh, which is the intersection of New South Street and Main Street. And uh, the, um, the balance between accommodating uh, trucks and accommodating pedestrians there. And uh, the well, bicycle pedestrian committee, as you won't uh, be surprised to learn, was strongly in favor of uh, doing everything to uh, accommodate pedestrians in the best possible way. So I think more on that a little bit later. Um, just point, point of information that that item is actually not on the agenda. Ah, okay. So, is there anything further you want to say as part of your report? Um, sure. Uh, uh, we understood that there is some discussion ongoing in the city uh, about uh, the possibility of um, officially accommodating WB65 standards, 65-foot uh, uh, trucks, um, turning between Main Street and uh, South Street, and that. This would require uh, roads at least as wide as they are now, uh, and uh, it would eliminate the possibility of the crosswalk across South Street connecting to Pulaski Park, uh, where, as everybody knows, there was a fatality uh, recently. And uh, the Bicycle and Pedestrian Committee, while not unanimous that that crosswalk should stay, um, was unanimous that um, that intersection is a terribly important one for the city, uh, that it should um, continue to serve as a major gateway to downtown, uh, that pedestrians are the indicator species of downtown. Uh, they are uh, the most vulnerable and um, in many 
families are most valuable uh, downtown users, uh, and they should be accommodated uh, safely and attractively. And that is done best <coughs> by having narrow streets and wide sidewalks, not the other way around. And we felt that accommodating the, um, the occasional very large truck um, was not the right way to go. Uh, and we understand that um, uh, there are trucks coming through downtown, but we think building the downtown to accommodate them is any questions or discussion? Just to be clear, did the subcommittee take a position on whether to have the <coughs> crosswalk or not? Not today. Not today. They have, they have in the past. We have in the past come out. We, I can't remember if we voted or if there's consensus, consensus, but um, and, uh, well, as I said, as because uh, it can't have been consensus because we have a sort of opinions. So. I'm afraid when I can't remember if we've had an official vote. But your position is <coughs> uh, actually was no, this is or no. I don't know. But the position is, is to remove it? No, it's to keep it. It's to keep it. Got it. Okay. Well thank you very much. That's a good great report. And any other discussion or questions? Um, public transit, not really being uh, no report this meeting. I uh, just so you know, uh, ten o'clock Friday, September fifth at uh, Academy Music is the ribbon cutting for the new PBTA service. So, come for cookies. Okay. Um, DPW updates. Really nothing from, <clears throat> more than from last meeting. We're in full swing of our dating operations at the moment. Um, we're probably winding up sometime in mid-October. <coughs> Do we have a, um, a date for the completion of the uh, North Main and that whole area? It's on the website. Um, I believe it's finished by the end of next week. We're just paving it. And then we'll come back and do all the striping activity. The main light comes all at once for all the streets. So the pavement should be done by the end of next week, I believe. It's on our website. And this is the biggest paving job in quite a few years now. Since Route 66 was done, that's correct. Congratulations. Any other questions, discussion? Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, well, at this time, I'd just like to ask, I, I saw some other people walk <coughs> in, um, and I'd just like to ask, are there any members of the public who'd like to speak? Please. We'll, we'll break the agenda. Thank you very much. And I'm, I'm Penny Geis. I live in Leeds, and I'm not talking about a Leeds issue. I would like to comment about the crosswalk on New South Street. Days before the accident, I wanted to cross the street there, and I decided it was too dangerous, and I went down to the light. Moments after the accident happened, I happened to be there. And I heard screams, although the victim was unresponsive. He was in so much pain. He was screaming and screaming and screaming. And I think pedestrians would be better served <coughs> by not having a crosswalk there. It is not very far to the crosswalk with a light. And in that vein, in the design of Pulaski Park, we should not be funneling people, encouraging people to cross there. We should be designing the park so that people are encouraged to come in and out of the park a different way and not tempted to cross the street there. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Are there any other members of the public who wish to speak on any topic? Um, thank you for that. Um, let's, um, let's, let's maintain the, the order here and move uh, into the ordinances section. Um, we have two ordinances to discuss, items 10 and 11, that have to do with 15 minute parking. Um, I don't know, if, um, Mr. Huntley, if you'd like to lead us off on that. Sure. We were asked to put together a ordinance because none of the limited time parking for 15 minutes except for Max City Hall is, is in the ordinance right now. 
So Alex probably put all these, this list together from the mayor's office. There's also a graphic chart of where they all are, which helps out a little bit easier than trying to read through the, the ordinance. But this will uh, create these actual spots as being for 15 minutes. So these are all what we see on the ground. That's correct. Okay. Including the new one in front of uh, Main Street Corners. That was the only one question that we had. It's just a relocation. It's just a relocation from Cashville. So, um, this, this is just as our handicap park cases, for example, enumerated in the ordinance. We don't have that in many parking uh, spaces, and that's what we're doing. This that is correct. Um, well, so I guess to, to, to follow our procedure, if someone, I, I think we should take these as a group. Um, and if someone agrees, they could, they could make that motion. So we, move. Okay. Uh, oh. Director Biden, would you take this to the group? Is there a second? Second. Okay. seconds. Um, so, is there any discussion on on these pair of ordinances? I, I have a question about, about this. Um, the first first ordinance adds um, twenty lines to the table in the schedule of limited time parking, uh, corresponding to the 20 locations where 15 minute spaces will be. And the second ordinance, um, the second ordinance goes into the others, another schedule of on-street parking meter zones and adds where appropriate the phrase, unless otherwise specified. So that, what that does is, if you have a place where the street is, um, uh, has parking meters. Uh, this provides that the 15 minute spaces supersede that because they're specified elsewhere in the code. Um, it seems to me that there are two streets that maybe should be in this list but aren't. And that's Old South Street and, and Green Street. Um, and the 15 minute parking? Well, those are 15 minute spaces that are being added by the first ordinance. Oh, you talk about, oh so you're talking about the second ordinance? Correct. Um, 312104. 312, I'm talking about, so in 312.104, which is Schedule 3, limited time parking, in which we will enumerate all the places that we have 15 minute parking. Um, Green Street and Old South Street are mentioned. <coughs> However, in 312.109, Schedule 8, which lists where the parking zones are, um, those two streets appear there, and I'm, I'm saying that they should also have the phrase, unless otherwise specified, put in next to them. I just think those two are missing from that, from that section. Does that, does that make sense? Um, in other words, <coughs> If I might, the, the, um, in other words, the point of uh, the, the amendments to 312.109 is uh, to allow for uh, 312.104 15 minute parking. Exactly. Um, and the one, two, three, four, five, six streets currently listed in 312.109 don't include all of the streets that have that 15 minute. That's right. There are two that would be missing from those six. Uh, that would be Green Street and Old South Street. And I realize that I'm the only guy who has less of a life. Um, so I, I, I printed out the, uh, the list of streets, but um, I'm happy to circle it around the room and, and share with you. But um, you know, Green Street, like the others, has a side of the street. What I, I'd like to read it. Just you know, this is very technical, obviously, but we, we should get this right. If we're going to do it. Um, let me read Green Street and Old South Street within Schedule 8, uh, which lists on-street parking meter zones. Um, Green Street, North Point, 540 feet westerly from West Street to Point, 848 feet westerly from West Street. Um, two hours, Class 1B. It seems as though, unless the distances aren't 
know, make it make it irrelevant. It seems like we should put there unless otherwise specified as well. So I can just yep. repeat the, the numbers and I'll check the thank you. Um, so Green Street North from point five hundred and forty feet westerly from West Street to eight hundred and forty eight feet westerly from West Street. Does that fall outside of the I'll check. Everyone is witnessing the, the scintillating sausage making of, 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 a, of an ordinance. That, <clears throat> correct. Um, it does not uh, include the 15 minute zone. Okay. Um, all right, so that takes care of that one. And the other question I had was Old South Street. Um, so that one begins at 161 feet southerly from Main Street and ends at 179 feet southerly from Main Street. I think it's a very short distance. Very short. Um, that one is included partly because item, the item in, uh, in 312 104, third from the bottom, is Main Street Southerly. Um, oh, I'm sorry, never mind. Never mind. I'm going to South Street. Okay. Um, so Old South Street is listed as Easterly. Didn't you say Southerly? Old South Street, so where, where the parking meters go on Old South Street is on the east side, and starting at a point 300 feet southerly from Main Street, and ending a point 100 feet northerly from Hampton Avenue. Oh, you know what? I think um, I think you read the, the, the I think you read the, the exact location of the 15 minute, not the uh, not the other one. Not oh, the other. I did. Okay. I read, so I just read the correct. One. Okay, 300 south of Main and 100 north of Hampton. Seems like there's an overlap of 11 feet. Wait, so this can make because it. Old South Street is one for the two minutes is 161 suddenly at Main to 179 suddenly. Right. That doesn't sound like an overlap. He's just okay. Does not sound like overlap. So no overlap. Right. Okay. All right. So neither of them have an overlap. I apologize for dragging you through. <laughs> it was there. very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so I just never maybe this is a question for Nancy as much as anybody else. I've never been clear about the fifteen minutes whether it's twenty four hours or until six or what it is. This is clearly saying 24 hours. Maybe that's fine. I just want to make sure we, we know what we're getting that much of At all. So it says 15 minutes at all hours. Yeah. It says no. Has that been what we're doing in I thought when, at least for City Hall, when Bill presented it, he was saying it was just till 6, even though there's no signs about that. <clears throat> and I don't know where I can imagine only when parking enforcement officers are out. So if they're off duty, somebody have to enforce it. It seems, I mean, legally, the police could enforce it. It seems like we should be clear. If we want to say it's 24 hours, that's fine. If we want to say it's till whatever time, that's fine. But I'd just like to know the ordinance one way or another. That's a good question. It seems I, it seems to say 24 hours currently in the ordinance that DPW proposes. It defeats their purpose if it's not 24 hours. You know, if the idea is that you're allowing people to park for as long as Yeah, and I guess. Maybe need to change the language on the sign so that people understand. <clears throat> in other words, in other words, there may be times, uh, say after 6 p.m., but during a very busy uh, period where there's an event in downtown or something where the rest of downtown is pretty full of parked cars, and you still want to keep these 15 minutes open even though enforcement is not. I mean, I guess it's, that's the way. I mean, certainly places like cleaners are closed, so it doesn't matter. The takeout food does matter. You're coming downtown to a restaurant to grab your food. So I, I, I'm really fine with that. Trying to make sure we all know what we're getting. So. I agree. I think we should say that it's important for us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
any other discussion or comments or quick side of uh, digression? Just for clarification, my notes, all that discussion on 104 and 109. Recommended exactly the way it is. Basically, what we Can we just like eliminate it from the notes? Just hit the lead. Just hit the lead. It never, the committee carefully considered We never got a whole overlap between the two. Yeah, we double checked the overlap. Yeah. Determined there wasn't. Can you ask a question? Please. 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 City Hall park lot is not here. Those are the ones that we should, the 15 minutes shouldn't be 15 minutes around the block because once the hall is closed, those sit down. So why not a different park? I don't know where the car is coming there. We're adding these new spaces. Oh, I see. They're already in there. Okay. All right, so we want to have a separate that. question about those things. I don't have the ordinance in front of me, but I'm pretty sure those are existing in the ordinance since you don't want that. Nancy. Nancy, can you weigh in on this? Thank you. The 15 minute zones, of course, parking enforcement officers leave at 6 o'clock. Right. But you still have the police department out there, and they can enforce that, the 15 minute zone without a problem. But yes, you do need to have it in the ordinance one way or the other, because it's always been just kind of floating out there. So I would definitely appreciate if that could be spelled out in the ordinance. Um, the 15 minute zone in, in this area out here, after 6 o'clock, um, that's, that has not been enforced, nor has it been enforced on Saturday. So I, I, my suggestion is a separate ordinance at some point would be to go back to this parking lot and say that. that so 15 minutes is all the hours out there in this parking lot is until 6 and not on Saturdays. Just go as the making today. If, if you are going to do that with the signs out there, the 15 minute ones, I would suggest that um, like with the EV vehicle parking, it says we ask that it be added, and it has really helped at all times. Um, so as a secondary part, or on the sign itself, or something, um, because that's really helpful. Thank you. So these 15-minute spaces are not at this table, but we're going to And then if somebody said two of these spaces are going to be in the car anyway. Right. <coughs> Part of the ordinance is council allowed them to be used from a clarity standpoint and my own work. Which which are going to be the two fifteen minute spaces closest to City Hall. So when I when I've asked at the council why weren't those fifteen minute spaces included in our ordinance, our what's what's uh, what's our rationale for not just putting them in today? I don't understand why there's a call not to include them. I mean, I think it should be uniform for all of them. Otherwise, one, it's confusing. Two, I mean, they serve the same purpose. People are willing to pick up food or something. They need 15 minutes. And I think it should be enforced there as well and just keep it uniform. But the issue is that because there's, there's so many spaces here and so few places that are close by that we just, we have limited parking bill safety and, and, and they're going to sit empty a lot. The 15 minutes on Main Street, People grab a lot and they do pull in and grab, you know, a piece of the go or something to go. City Hall parking lot, if you did a 15 minute trade, you're just sort of wasting the space. So that, that's my only But just maybe I'm being think about this, but I mean, if you're not proposing removing the 15 minutes spaces there in City Hall, I personally want to find remove them, but I think the, 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 the collector feels fairly strongly that there's a large contingent of elderly people coming to pay the taxes and they really feel like but they're not, you know, so they're very heavily used for one or two weeks, four times a year after the tax bill. <coughs> and then they're really important, and they're not that heavily used. I have to say, when I come downtown and I, in evening and weekend, they're almost always full, so. Right. I don't know if people are not but if we using start, them for 15 minutes. Or they're actually I think that's the issue of people. Money. It's sort of people's discovery. You can come down here and not get a ticket and come, but it, worry, but it worries me that Nancy could suddenly decide she wants to. Everybody. Well, we need to stop revealing our, our <laughs> hidden parking spaces on the videos that are going to be online. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pomerantz, do you have something? No. But, I mean, just to close this point, I, I, I agree with Councillor Klein. If, if we're going to have a 15 minute space there, the purpose of this ordinance is to list where all those 15 minute spaces are in the city. I'm, I'm unclear why we're treating it separately. And in fact, we could put it in there and specify that it only goes until 6 p.m. if we wanted to. I mean, wouldn't that be? I, 
again, maybe I'm, I'm not picking up on something, but is there a value to not doing it in this, in this ordinance? I feel like I would be asked about it, and I don't have a good answer. I don't context. I sound like the ordinance exists already. I think, I think you're right if that ordinance isn't already there, but I don't know. My understanding is we lack an ordinance for any of the 15-minute spaces, and they've all been designated administratively. That's the, that's the rationale on this. Then yes, I agree. <laughs> okay. Um, well, then I would propose that we add that in <coughs> somehow. Would that, would that be okay with everybody? And I think there's a difference between the random 15 minutes on this map and a cluster of a small parking lot at night, so I, I think the six o'clock makes sense. Okay. So, shall we, shall we just write this right now? So it's the west side of the parking lot behind City Hall, but excluding those two more of the most ones that are going to be the parking lot. Yeah. That'll be coming relevant once the signage shows up for the zip cars. Okay. So, under location, so here's a table. We're writing another row on the table. Location. Main Street behind City Hall. Mm -hmm. okay. Side Western. Western Lee. Um, from, we don't have the measurements, I guess, is what we're, we're lacking. Like count the number of spaces. There's six spaces all total. So maybe it should be the the <laughs> four spaces. Um, do you have a handicap spot in there, too? Right. Um, so, that's yeah. addition or that's. Uh, hang on. Sorry. <laughs> it's not every part of the city won't do this. It's called design. Yep. Site visit. <laughs> it's an emergency site. <laughs> Um, we could also just propose an amendment of the ordinance. So four 15-minute spots. You have the two zip spots, four 15-minute spots, and one HP spot. Okay. Um, so it's so second to the fifth parking spot, third on the subway side. Th oh, third. Sorry. <clears throat> and the right the side. On the second? Three, third to the sixth. Third to the sixth. <laughs> Should you want to do this at the table here? Yeah, maybe we don't. Uh, how about this? Why don't, why don't, if, if, we, if we pass this along, um, I, I could work with folks to write an amendment that we put in, in the ordinance committee. To add this. Would that be acceptable to them? We could kind of do it a little more sane way. Right? Mm -hmm. It'd be fine. I think it's been useful to us about it now. Okay. You've got guidance on what. Alright, so, so we're still talking about it from 8 in the morning to 6 at night. These spaces on a Friday. But that's, I guess, I guess that's what we're talking about. And the rationale for doing that is just that they're different from on on Yeah, the, the, the cluster spaces that wouldn't get heavily used by businesses. I just want to take, any, take away anyone's cost. favorite in the parking space. <laughs> Alright. What exactly? We have a motion to discuss them as a group. What's coming next? So we have a motion on the floor to approve both of these as group. We discussed an amendment, but no one made a formal motion to amend. So all we have is the one motion, uh, first and second, which I believe we should vote on. Okay. All right. So all in favor of positive recommendation as is of these two ordinances. All right. Opposed? Staying? Okay. Thank you very much takes care of that. Um, so now we're on to pure discussion items, and I'd like to take um, one out of order and move number 17, um, commercial trucks on Hatfield and North Allen Street first, um, in case there's um, any, any further comment. Um, but we did hear um, a resident of Hatfield Street today explain his this plight, and I'm just wondering if there's any further discussion at this time in the commission about truck traffic in this area and what can be done about it. Uh, 
question that needs to be done is the engineering study to look at the truck exclusion rule according to Mass DOT rules. So the traffic counters should have to be put out there for a period of time, and the classifications should have to be evaluated before anything can be done. Dick, can you guys also look at the geometry of Bridge Road to North Elm to make sure that would work? That was my concern also, is you're going to have truck encroachment into the, this is the eastbound lane, the westbound lane of uh, Bridge Road. The big trucks turning into that. I think we try to avoid it if we can. So is this an engineering study that you think we ought to do, or are you able to do? Well, we're able to do. I can't tell you the time frame right now because we're sure. pretty busy. But it probably we can get the counters down before winter, and at least get the information to the commission okay. as the classification of vehicles. Okay. Is there any need for an official uh, traffic county application to be created in the process? And so forth? <laughs> Um, we're doing one for Clement Street right now that's not part of the traffic calming application. We're looking at it as a uh, truck exclusion route. Right. Which is not traffic calm. It's, it's not traffic calm. And a changing signage in it's terms of directions, even a stop sign is not traffic calm. That's supposed to be traffic calm. And traffic calming explicitly excludes the, uh, um, the concept of the volume of the traffic. Explicitly excluding this attempts to move traffic from one place to another. Okay. Well, I'm content to leave it at the DPW discretion. Fitting uh, in amongst all the other huge amount of work you have to do. But I think that that information would be valuable to consider this question. And Is it concerned? That section of Hatfield Street only, or are there any concerns about North Elm Street? For trucks? Right. I'm only bringing the specific issue that I, I was made aware okay. of to this commission. It could well be there's a holistic road. Is it true that uh, there are no residents? along North Elm across from the cemetery, or that goes right through the cemetery, is that what you said? No, it's, <coughs> it doesn't go through the cemetery. <coughs> it's on the side of the cemetery. And what about on the southwest side of North Elm? Are there not residences along there? There are condo complexes that have some of the driveways into them, but they're not immediately adjacent to the road. Mm -hmm. the, the portion is that not true? <coughs> the no, there's, there's some <coughs> single family homes there. There are a couple single family yeah. homes. Right now, but it sounds like there are a few houses. This is the section of North Elm that's after the stop sign, between the stop sign and Bridge Road. Mm -hmm. I don't believe there's houses. There. There's no. Yeah, George, there. I think you're thinking of beyond <coughs> that turn. There's St. Mary's on both sides, and then there's construction services. Yes. Which is the kind of big plant in the wooded area. Right. And That's right. There is a driveway at St. Mary's. Cemetery um, building there. Yep. I'm not sure if I called it a dwelling, but it's a place of business. Mm -hmm. Long, long-term dwellings. Yes. Okay. Um, any other questions or questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, why don't we move on? There's a um, Councilor Klein. Um, you have compression in the East Springs. Wish to discuss. So this is, um, I just brought this forward because I've gotten a number of calls from residents of Ward 7 who are dealing with um, pretty intense uh, truck brake noise, air compression brakes. Um, my understanding, I know that uh, there was an attempt in the last session of council to actually create some ordinance around it beyond um, what we already have about using them judiciously, properly inspected. Um, if they're not equipped with a muffler, there can be some kind of enforcement, um, some kind of uh, fines applied. But um, I, I just wanted to hear a little bit more about what this 
Commission has talked about in the past and what decisions, why decisions, the decisions that were made were made and the recommendations that were made to the council at the time were made. Um, if there's any reason to revisit, if it's just in a matter, a matter of enforcement at this point, um, I'm just curious to hear this body, um, whatever history you can share so that I can make a decision about whether or not it seems to be something we need to revisit or not. Were we part of that discussion? We have discussed it in the past, yes. We have, okay. Um, I remember looking at trying to find other city ordinances that, and it is an enforcement issue because it's, um, you know, it's a transient noise. You're gonna have to stop the truck at the point of making the noise and then have some way from a enforcement point of view to actually document that noise was real and not just their perception of it. Yeah. So it's, um, <coughs> I, I think you know what they are. It's an effort not to use your brakes and use the engine compression to slow the engine as the truck is approaching stop. And um, they can be quiet if it's not first. And so it seems like there have been other communities that have tried to do this, but I didn't, I wasn't convinced that there was anything in the way of a good ordinance that was enforceable that was going to get, it's like you want, you know it's not a good idea and you know we don't want to do it in town, but I haven't come to an idea that says this is how we handle it. But I remember going and researching, you know, just, a, I was asked technically what, what are they, and, and they, they come in two different kinds, and you can have one that's not one the real issue is, um, unlike the radar speeding gun, how are you going to document that this truck has done something in case or something that's a speed of the No real good news in what I remember. Um, my other question about it is, has there been any attempt in particular areas that we know that they're being used? Um, <coughs> and there really is a, a, a a situation with kind of noise pollution if we've um, talked at all about putting signs up that just either state the, um, the ordinance that we do have in place or can recommend to the drivers not to use their brakes. I mean, there are particular areas that seem to be real hot spots and, and I'm just wondering if there's a way that we can um, use what we have at least on the books. So probably one of the hot spots that you're referring to is Route 9 coming down from Havenville. I would assume that, being the Long Hill. Um, I haven't Hill. actually gotten complaints there. I've gotten <coughs> complaints on Florence Street. There are a lot of uh, trucks that are cutting through now from the hill towns and going down Florence Street past the, the elementary school, Leeds Elementary. Yeah. Um, that's one of the places, and then Bridge Road, a number of places, particularly with the traffic cutting that we're doing around JFK. I think we're going to be experiencing a lot more noise there with brakes that are kind of suddenly, um, a lot of trucks that are suddenly putting brakes on. Mm -hmm. One of the problems with the ordinance is that, you know, the JPEGs are there for safety. And this is one of the driving things behind it. It's a, it's a safe means to slow the vehicle down besides going through your brake system. In fact, um, I was reading through on the state of Vermont, uh, they, they talk about engine brakes and signs in the communities up there, and they said by their Vermont Transportation Regional Investigator, they said that these signs are not warranted and not supported by the state statutes or the manual on uniform traffic control devices. They deem it to be safety-oriented having these. By having unmuffled brakes, engine brakes, is something a little bit different. Those are the real loud ones. Um, since 1978, apparently, from the research I've done, all of the vehicles that have these air compression brakes have to be muffled properly. They're supposed to. But there are trucks that, in fact, have it, and those are the kind of, that's the mm -hmm. enforcement that we're thinking about here, because we know, in fact, that many trucks have it, despite the fact that there is this <coughs> national uh, mandate. The reason I brought up Route 9 um, in your award was that I had a conversation with um, Mass DOT about this, and they would not let us put any of these signs up on the state layouts. So the signs wouldn't be effective until you got to Clementine's or Book Restaurant. Um, Route 66 would not be an issue because it's local only, even though it's got a state number to it. But even Route 10 coming into town, you wouldn't be able to do it until you get to the bridge um, by the old Killing Motors. Looks like that's so, 
how are you going to catch and warn everyone that we have this restriction in place when they're coming in from a lot of different side streets and, and getting on Route 66, rather than the West Hampton Town Line or coming in from Glendale or West Farms? Do we have these signs littered all over the city to make people aware that we have this thing if they're not coming in from the outskirts of town coming in? We have particular areas, though, that we know are, are problem areas. Um, is it an easy fix for the city to create those signs and put them in place? In places that we can, in fact? It's an easy fix. You can buy a sign, you can buy a post, to the trench it, put it in. You probably will sign in the language, you're probably looking at a $200 sign and post to install in time, time to do that. And the question is how many of them and where? Just a quick uh, piece of information that might be helpful to, to the debate. Um, prohibitions on, you know, on noise and I think defective mufflers as well are actually a matter of state law. And when I talked about this briefly with the solicitor at one point, uh, I made the point that there are some areas of law which are preempted by the state. Um, you know, so it would be difficult and difficult to enforce to add add to the state law prohibition on noise and, and um, defective mufflers, uh, separate entirely from the question of, of signage. But I just wanted to provide that information. I wonder, this may not have an answer, but the question is, if it has to pass inspection by the state, is there a requirement for a muffler to be in place? I mean, that, I'm looking at it as another way to get, because. I spent 33 years on the corner of North Maple Street and Bridge Road. And I know just before we moved, there was a period of construction where there was a lot of truck traffic. And there was one company, and they were cowboys. It would mm -hmm. shake the windows yep. when, they, when they came. And I know, like this in this particular situation, if I, if there was a means to make a complaint against that company through a state agency on that one particular company, because there are plenty of them go through that have the appropriate mufflers in place and it's so noticeable that uh, maybe there's just another way of dealing with this without a city ordinance, if there are just a few bad actors. Well, there's a Commercial Vehicle Safety Alliance that does the inspection of commercial vehicles, which is most of what we're talking about. And I'll, I'll be happy to look into that and see if that if if that there is a reporting mechanism there for, for a company that is repeatedly. In that case, you don't have to prove it. You just have to track it over some time and then report to them, and they, that, that company will be inspected for your market. And just to be clear, we're not we're talking about mufflers specifically for the, the air compression. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's the one off the engine. Um, I, I don't know enough. I mean, that that will take a little looking into to see if, if there is any mechanism in that organization. They set the inspection standards for the trucks, and that's the state police officer that pulls that person over and inspects them on the side of the road. Um, but I, I don't know if that's included. And I, I'm thinking about. South Street, as it comes around the curve and comes down to the light, of New South is a place where it is a city road, mm -hmm. and it does, you know, I'm, I'm not thinking a sign is a bad idea, because I think people will be aware that there's been enough talked about here that we're, we're, we're looking at, at the issue, but I don't, I don't want to do so good that we want to ask you to now comment on a different issue. Um, item 13, the restoration of the Hotel Bridge. Thank you. Great. Um, so this is something that I brought to the uh, Board of Public Works, um, uh, what's that called? Yeah. Conference Committee. Conference Committee, thank you. Couldn't think of that word. Uh, but it felt like this is also a place where there should be some discussion just to raise everybody's awareness, um, partly because as uh, one of our public comment people, George Kohout, 
shared, um, I think it's a multimodal uh, route of transportation that has been long used and valued. It's uh, the, uh, what is called the Hotel Bridge, it's also known by the name Old Shepherd's Road Bridge that connects Water Street with Main Street and Leeds. Um, and just a little bit of background on it, the Mass DOT Historic Metal Trust Bridge Inventory lists the Hotel Bridge as the seventh oldest in Massachusetts and the oldest in Northampton. It was closed to all traffic in 2004. Um, in response to an application by the Leeds Civic Association in partnership with BPW, the Northampton CPA and City Council approved $35,000 for an evaluation of the bridge. Uh, and Stantec, an engineering firm, just uh, submitted its report in May, in May, was it? Recently, just recently, um, that says that in order to restore this bridge that has been closed to traffic, it's going to cost about $1.5 million uh, to actually restore it. There is some discussion, though, among uh, engineer, other engineers that that's a high estimate, so it might not be exactly uh, that much, but we know that's a, a heavy lift and uh, folks from the Leeds Civic Association are really working to explore other modes of raising the funds for the, the restoration project. It's a bridge that was built in 1880 um, and steel truss bridges are um, somewhat rare and they are really kind of serious uh, elements of American history, and so there is a movement around the country, but especially in Massachusetts, to restore them and to preserve them. Um, there are just a couple other things that I want to share that I think would be useful to know. Apparently, the bridge in uh, the Hotel Bridge carries a gas line. Um, we're hoping that that will lend some weight to its call for the preservation of the bridge. Um, we have a real expert apparently at UMass, a man named Alan Ludenegger, who's a, a professor of engineering. He's an iron bridge expert, um, and he can help us with the engineering aspects of uh, the National Register of Historic Places application that we would like to file. We're hoping for city support, both council support, DPW support, um, in submitting the application at the state level so that we can be recognized at the federal level. Uh, as a national historical site, uh, which will allow us to raise funds. Um, so this isn't completely relevant to this commission, but I think it's important just to note that what the Leeds Civic Association and other folks are asking for currently is removal of the Jersey barriers that have been put up since uh, 2004. Um, we have planters that the Leeds Civic Association actually purchased. We have a gardener to plant in them. Um, we have someone who has volunteered to make a kiosk to put at the bridge um, that will give kind of historic information and uh, walking routes around using the bridge. Um, so there will be a request, I think, to uh, get further CPA funds. Uh, to restore the bridge, and as I said, we will be asking for support for any applications we do to have it recognized for preservation, for, for preservation historically. Um, I don't know if we can go back, but there might be a few folks here that want to just make specific comments about the bridge that Whatever might be want useful to for this commission to hear. But I, I have some questions before we do that. Well, how, how extensive is the restoration? Is it is it meant to restore to traffic? Just pedestrian, just pedestrian. To pedestrian traffic and bike, bike and pedestrian is what we're looking to do, um, not for cars. Um, that's pretty, really as you done. said, that's a pretty heavy lift for a pedestrian crossing. Yeah. It's um, a personal check. There are, I think that there are ways that we can kind of downgrade that cost based on how we'd like it restored. There are some folks that are much better experts than I am about the restoration piece, the preservation piece, so that's why I wanted to open it up to see if they have any other details. One other question. Is that engineering study available? Yes. Yeah, okay, thanks. Yeah, Councillor, if you want to recognize anyone in particular, if anyone wants to. Jason or Heidi or Penny, any any folks here that have been working on this very carefully would like to share any other details you think are relevant to this commission. 
Hi, I'm for the record, you're stating that in an address. Of sure. My name is Jason Johnson. I'm the chair of the uh, Meads chapter of the Mill River Greenway Initiative. I live at 163 Main Street in Leeds. Um, we can see the bridge from our house and we've used it for as long as I've lived there since 2000 to go to the post office and to the conservation area on Roberts Hill. So it, it is quite a heavily used um, portion of our, of our pedestrian artery and uh, as a representative of the Mill River Greenway, many people and how they can be supportive. And, um, we're really excited that Smith College is going to be taking on um, a design project to potentially incorporate it into a spur of the bike path. And so we also expect that there's going to be some, some cooperative um, elements with other portions of, um, of the community. Does anybody else have any questions about how that might relate to the, the Greenway? It seems fairly straightforward. I mean, as it crosses the river, it's um, extremely historic, I think, and a rare piece of architecture that we want to really keep as far as we can use for now. So just clarification, Jason. So the, the Jersey barriers are there now to prohibit vehicular traffic? All traffic. All traffic. But you well, say people use the bridge. People were using the bridge until chain link fence was put up across the facing of it about two or three weeks ago. So that's preventing all pedestrian traffic at this point. Um, I think the Jersey barriers were there to prevent a car from accidentally driving through the chain link fence. But the planters that um, have been provided by the Lead Civic Association are large concrete and they'll be heavy enough, I, I believe, to stop a, a vehicle. And so that would be a physical barrier. They're just, uh, I don't know if people can see this, but this is the old, uh, it's called the Old Drake Hill Bridge in Simsbury, Connecticut, which is a beautiful specimen that was restored of the uh, Steel Truss Bridge um, that, what's that? Iron, Iron Truss Bridge that uh, we have, we've had contact with the uh, Lead Civic Association, sent a whole delegation down to ask them about the restoration project and to look at what could be done, um, and this is just can give you a sense of what an incredible kind of historical and beautiful bridge it can be with uh, restoration. Any other questions, uh, Mr. Johnson? Great. Well, we're looking forward to collaboration. Yes. Well, I'm not sure this is for you, but I, I know in um, the bridge that from South Boston to downtown that goes by the old courthouse. One of the things that they did is they removed part of the decking. Because I guess the issue was if the whole if the whole decking was there, the weight adds up, and so there's there used to be three lanes, and now there's just one lane you could walk across. Has that been talked about? A sort of a way to keep the to allow decking but minimize the weight loading on the bridge? That actually is in the Stantec report. That's one of the things I've, uh, I've looked at being done. Is to take that existing deck off and leave it there to stop the uh, the rush from keep moving through the system. While funds are being raised and take the weight off the existing bridge. And then a replacement with a, a decking that, that's good for pedestrian use, like wood. So it could be a narrow deck or it could be a composite. But yes. it could be just like a 10 foot wide thing, not the whole 30 yeah, foot width. It is 10 feet wide. <laughs> the whole is. It's like 11. Why am I asking that now? It's 11 feet wide. Okay. Thanks very much. I'll just, I'll just add that that used to be one of my favorite little special sections of many, many, many bike rides. And I'm very sorry to see it closed off, and I wholeheartedly support your efforts. We have had incredible movements with the biking community, because it is a route that's used um, quite a bit. So there are a number of, kind of bike groups that are, have kind of pledged their support and involvement in the restoration project. Um, there's another group, too, that contacted us recently that We've been doing um, an annual, except for this year, for several years we did an annual uh, bike ride to support it, so we collected funds um, that way and we'll continue to do so. But I think our, our real push and our real hope is to um, get it uh, recognized on the National Historical Register and then we can start applying for both uh, private grants and uh, federal grants for restoration. So. That is the project that's being pursued. Is there anyone else from the Lead Association that would like to speak? Okay. 
Um, I would like to oh, Heidi C. and State Upland Road, please. Um, I'd like to just speak to the aesthetics of the entranceway to the um, Hotel Bridge as it is right now. And um, the Jersey barriers just look awful. There's a broken wire sticking out of one of them, actually a big steel thing and a big chunk off of it. Um, our goal, the Lead Civic Association's goal, is to make the entranceways, although they are fenced off of this, the black fence, which kind of visually disappears, um, to still make it look pleasing for the people that walk by, the bicyclists that go by, so that they don't just ignore the bridge. Our goal is to raise awareness for the historical value of this Iron Trust Bridge, which is the oldest bridge in the city. And there are very few of these bridges left in the state. So um, other townships have left their iron bridges once they get a little rusty or something to decay, and then they're gone. So it is a possibility. Even though the price tag is really high, um, things can be done in small stages. And um, maybe that price tag is um, not all that accurate. But the wooden decking um, certainly will be lighter. The iron truss bridges also, the, um, the weight, of course, is uh, the truss is what helps um, the bridge carry the weight. Not so much all of the steel business underneath. I mean, that too. But, um, so it's a special bridge, it's a, it's a good looking bridge, it spans the Mill River, our city's river. Leeds um, was devastated during the flood. This bridge was built after the flood. It's an incredible um, symbol of um, optimism and, you know, what good engineering and, you know, positive outcomes can achieve. So I think it's a worthwhile thing for the city to get behind, and um, our community is going to get behind, and bicyclists are going to get behind, somehow bring it back, no matter how long it takes. We should be daunted by it as a goal. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Any questions from Ms. Stevens? Thank you very much. Sure. Now, isn't the, uh, the bike path, the railroad bridge over the Connecticut River, a steel through truss bridge. Tire. Is it up there? I don't know. I know it's a, I know it's a truss bridge. Yeah. Um, and it's which one? The Norwalk Rail Trail bridge. It's a steel. Oh. I think it's a steel truss. I think it's a steel yeah. truss. I think. Any other further public comment, Mr. Kohout? You want to double dip here? I sure do, but um, it's really just a point of information. I think uh, the DPW net is going to coordinate a public meeting around the Stantec report. Yes, yeah, September, September, September it was talked about. Okay, but it hasn't been. Okay. Is there a date? It's autumn. We have a meeting okay. on September 9th. We'll try to get that. Okay. It might be another opportunity for the board to come and hear about some of the aspects of it. Thank you. <coughs> I'm John Dietrich. Uh, I live at 16 Upland Road in Leeds. Um, I just very briefly want to follow up on Heidi's enthusiasm here. Jim, Jim Montgomery from the neighborhood is working with the Civic Association. Jim's here. Um, I'm also a member. I haven't paid my dues yet, but I'm, I'm a, I've been a member for many years. Uh, I just wanted to say in terms of um, funding, uh, I'm uh, working with Al Lutonator, who I know well at UMass. Al's done a lot of work on one of his, his pet things are, are bridges. He's in love with bridges. Uh, I'm with him. Um, I, he's been on vacation, so unfortunately we haven't had him come out and, and meet lately. But um, we're trying to. I'm trying to help him, or he's going to help us work on the uh, National Historic Preservation uh, application. So uh, my goal is to help some funding, see if we can get some money through that, because um, there is a process, um, and I think there's a lot of documentation on this particular bridge that would help us out in that. So. Just by way of saying, Al, Al will be a good resource, I think, for us. And, and uh, there may be student opportunities too for, for uh, helping with grad students and special uh, special projects too. Great, thank you very much. Um, any other further public comment? I, I we would have moved it up earlier if I had known so many people were here to comment.
come in. So thank you very much for your patience, and I appreciate your um, waiting and then also participating in this important discussion. Is there any other discussions that we want to have as a commission on, on the hotel for the kids for now? Okay. And for now, we'll, we'll move on. And thanks again. Um, so the next item on the agenda is um, it, was, it was brought up by, um, by Nancy Forstall. We're still here. Um, also, very patiently, thank you very much, Nancy. Um, concerns raising, uh, possibly raising, handicap parking violation fines. I'd like to present this idea, that would be great. Thank you. Um, as you know, um, Mass General Law provides for parking tickets to be issued when unauthorized vehicles park in designated handicapped parking spots. Um, in 2001, uh, Mass General Law, Chapter 40, Section 21, and let me, let me pass these various laws around so that you know what I'm referring to here. Anyways, in 2001, uh, Chapter 40, Section 21 was amended for unauthorized parking and handicapped spaces. This increased the fine from a range that was $25 to $100 to a range of $100 to $300. And the actual amount of the fine within that authorized range um, is actually set by the local jurisdiction. Um, at present, Northampton has the fine set at $100. Um, I conducted a, a basic telephone survey for the surrounding area, and I was able to get in touch with uh, Amherst. They have theirs at 200, Westfield 200, Holyoke 300, Springfield 150, Chicopee 100, East Hampton. Theirs is at 50. I don't know why it's posted at 50. Um, I, like I said, this was a basic telephone survey. Um, Boston, it, you know, obviously on the other side of the state, but Boston is 120 for um, an HP parking spot violation and 100 for a ramp violation. Um, so my request is that the commission um, discussed the possibility of raising that amount for that fine to somewhere in between that hundred to three hundred dollar range. Um, as it says in the law, it's up to the local jurisdiction to set the amount. It can be anywhere from a hundred to three hundred. Um, Thank you. I'm sure the folks have questions. So. I was wondering how many tickets you cost us a year for this. Um, since just this past January, um, we've issued 35 tickets at $100. Um, since the beginning of this year, since January, we've confiscated 25 forged, altered, expired, huh. misused, Used placards. Placards. Um, that's just since January, and that's just mainly in the downtown business district. Um, last year, forty something. The year before that, forty something. How do you confiscate them? Our parking enforcement officers are very alert to watching for these. Um, placards that they know what they're supposed to look like. They're watching, they're catching them, that people have altered the dates. Um, people will go to a lot of trouble to try and alter dates, forge them, And do they confront ones. the drivers on the spot? They'll, they'll wait, try and confront the person when they return to the vehicle, or if the person is in, not confront, approach <laughs> in a non-confrontational manner. Um, and you know, ask to see the placard, um, and any time that um, a ticket is issued, we take pictures. Uh, part of their hand ticket machine computer um, can take three pictures for every ticket that is issued, and they do. So we have pictures of those to go along with the um, the ticket that's issued. 
of the violation, the vehicle, the altered placard, even if we can't get it. Um, uh, do you um, do you have a, a strong recommendation for what the amount should be, and are you concerned that if we did it very high, that it would serve as a disincentive to your uh, officers to actually write those tickets? I don't think that it would it serve as a disincentive because they are very adamant. They are very dedicated um, to not having handicap placard abuse happening on Northampton streets. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Pomerantz. So, first of all, I think we're uh, randomly altering a record we should have five hundred dollars uh, yeah. on top of the hundred dollars for parking in the space. But is your feeling, Nancy, if we raise the fee to between let's say two hundred as an example, is it going to deter the number of tickets that the PEOs are writing? No. I do not think that it would deter it because they think that it's a, a big burden on someone. No. I don't think that it would deter the PEOs at all. Um, I think that they are um, dedicated to stopping the, the misuse and abuse of these placards. We have even had um, a PEO stop a, um, a food delivery person using his deceased parents' placard so that he could find convenient parking to deliver and to pick up. I mean, this is to the extent that people are going to. Now, it's unfortunate and it's disgusting, frankly, um, and but it's happening out there. And we, frankly, we're doing this, consider what's happening all across the state. And, it's, and the uh, uh, Massachusetts General Law is trying to reflect that, that it's, it's happening and it's rampant. Paula, Ms. Bruce had a question. Oh, it's just a good time to ask if, um, how actively those are used by, I mean, are they pretty much on the spots filled with Handicap permitted. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure that. I Definitely. The, yes. Our, our handicap spots are being used um, actively, continuously by people who are authorized to be there. Mr. Potterings, um, Nancy, is, is the PD writing any handicap to violations? I'm sorry? Is the PD writing any or is it just the um, PDOs? The, the PDOs are, are seeing these. Um, I, I have seen a couple of them also um, from the police department because they are up at like the parking lots, uh, like Walmart, Big Y parking lots, when the violation is taking place up there, at areas that our PEOs are not right. patrolling. So yes, definitely, the PD is right in this. Right. Yep. Any questions? Yeah, there was a time that the handicap sticker had to have a picture the placard, yes. It it's still has to have it. It still has to have it on it, um, but you'll see that there's a white bar across one. If you happen to see one hanging from somebody's car, you'll often see that there's a, uh, a white piece of paper or tape oh, yeah, across sure. it. That's a that's an identity theft um, protection because it has the person's picture, their name, and that makes um, a security And additionally, problem. the person who is qualified for the sticker has to be in the car. The person, yeah, if they're not driving, they have to be a passenger. Right. The person. So a daughter could able. pull into a handicapped spot, throw on the placard, and get out and do whatever she wanted to do without that person being in the car. And there could be some too. I know. And it happens. Um, a, a caregiver. Right. Yes. It Thank you. Any other questions? Um, and I, I, I did Patty Shaughnessy. Um, did want me to express that she is definitely in support of this, um, the director of the Disability Commission. So she, I did speak with her about this, and she's definitely in favor of action being taken on. Um, so are you and Ms. Shaughnessy recommending any particular value of $300? Um, I'm going to leave that. My, my request is that you take it under advisement, and um, yes, I would like to see it increased. Um, well, but I, that's your decision as a local jurisdiction. I have a couple questions for you. Um, one is, um, with, when when we have this money come in from fines, does it where does it go? 100% uh, of it goes to the local jurisdiction, um, <clears throat> and 100% of the money is collected by parking tickets accrued to the local jurisdiction, um, and that goes to the disability commission. It goes to the disability commission. Yes. Budget. Um, has this gone before the parking committee at all? No. Shouldn't it? 
for downtown? Yeah. I, I don't know. It's one thing that they're still discussing, but I think they've not wanted to get involved with sort of I mean, more questions for Holly. They've sort of been focused on those parking principles and sort of that level and not the detail specific. But if they're yeah. not dealing with the details, certainly the parent commission shouldn't deal with the details. It seems to me. Yeah. I, I, mean, I, I don't know. We took up the change in parking fee debate in length previously. But, but that was partly in the absence of a standing committee. <laughs> everybody had already, everybody had jumped off their committee at that time. <coughs> I would also note that we actually don't have anything to refer to them. If we wanted an ordinance, we'd have to write it. So perhaps what we could do is, if we were to bring an ordinance uh, to the next meeting, we could, I, we could liaise with the chair of the parking committee in between now and then and ask if they wanted to take it up and give their opinion on it. Uh, there isn't an ordinance in place already. Well, no, I mean, this is a recommendation coming from the... Um, well, but there's something that... We have the like ordinance in place. We yeah, just have something established on it. I don't think that we would just amend. Oh, no, let me, sorry. There's no proposed ordinance that would amend the current law. Right. Right. And that's what we would have to have to send it anyway. Um, so, I mean, why don't, why don't we finish the discussion on whether we would refer to the parking committee? One yes, one no. So any, any other uh, any other thoughts? I, I don't know. I, just, I think it's a pretty simple, straightforward story. I'm happy to carry it to the parking committee with a recommendation. I mean, I think my gut feeling is double the current amount is a good starting point. But that's just a debatable number. I and mean, that's the headline that will go in the paper. I think because it's parking related, um, I mean, part of what we've been trying to do is re-enfranchise our committees. And so, you know, if they decide they don't want to deal with it, they can let us know that. But I think that it would be useful to have that in the end as, as a parking, a parking oriented committee. Any other thoughts on that, this issue? I, I, I agree. I, mean, I, have, I have to have to agree with that. And that my only reason would be that it's a process, and they've got enough on their on their agenda to deal with the park, parking principles and, and redesigning it. And it's a pretty small issue, as far as I'm concerned. Well, let me be clear what I said. I, we can certainly have them consider it for the next meeting, but I was going to, I, I think we could have them consider our discussion, and our discussion could have some details in it, and that's where I came up with double the current amount. So I don't foresee us voting on it now and not having talked to them about it. I think that is a sort of, doesn't feel quite right, but I could see having a discussion with them before the next meeting and being prepared to consider it then. Yeah, and indeed there's nothing to even vote on today even if we wanted to. So I think that makes sense. Um, I, so my, my preference would in fact be to involve the parking committee um, because as Council Klein says, we are trying to be a franchise. So I think that approach that Devin described and you described, I think, makes sense. Um, Do we have a process by which that will happen? Do we um, do that? Or is that something that you as chair could kind of talk to Colin Mark about? Yeah, I'm and happy to contact you. Well, I mean, it's a committee that's totally created by this commission, so it's kind of our process. Um, and I would recommend that I just be in touch with you, um, Holly Mott. And, got to you as vice chair. Um, okay. Is, so I would also like to know where in our code is this specification about $100? Because I'll be honest with you, I couldn't find it. Well, it's listed under the fines. It's a schedule, a fine schedule. Okay. Um, if you would, would you send me the, the, sure. the reference in the code? That would be mm -hmm. helpful. If we are going to put together an ordinance to, to code on one way or the other. Um, a related question I have, are there any other questions so far? A related question I have is, um, do we have the authority, in fact, to, and is there a fine that comes with forging a placard? Uh, what we do is um, uh, we put together a packet. I write a letter, a cover letter, 
and send it to the uh, Medical Affairs Division of the Registry, um, showing them what had happened, what our evidence is, um, and then they take it from there, and they can go in so far as suspension of license and, and that sort of thing. Um, we can also call, and we do try to do this as call the police department over because they can issue a $500 ticket. Hmm. That's different. That's above and beyond the parking ticket that we have the authority to do in parking enforcement. So it's not just a matter of the state has to levy a fine for that violation. Our, our Northampton Police Department can issue to a $500. Well, that's actually gone up also. Um, that can go up to... But this would be up to the, you know, the, the police department. Um, $500 uh, for the police department, a citation of $500 can be written under Chapter 90. Um, and that has gone, it was, $100 has gone up to $500 with a mandatory 30-day loss of driver's license. So uh, there can be some serious repercussion. So just for, thank you, for, for clarification, the maximum is going up to $500? Yes, that's and what it is appears there, here. And, and where in our local policy do we decide how much to make the citation out for in Northampton? I'm or sorry? How much, where do we in Northampton um, make the policy of how much we're going to find someone for forging a placard? Is it just administrative? No, no, administrative they, they, they issue a regular um, citation. Um, State law. Under the under Mass General Law, um, and the provision increases the fine for wrongful use of the HP plate or placard from a hundred to five hundred dollars now. I see. So it's not a range offense. like the other. It's, it's right. It's seven right. to five hundred. Okay. Fine. And then each subsequent offense is one thousand okay. dollars. And suspension of license. Okay. Any other questions right now? I, I would suggest that I again talk to the chair of the parking committee and work with you to bring an actual ordinance to this commission for next month, and then we can kind of get into if there are any adjustments to make by the actual amount of money. That's what I would recommend. Does that make sense? Thank you. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, all right. Um, Wayne, you uh, want to talk about leads traffic mitigation? Um, so we just started this with parking in the, in the, the bike pit this morning. But we have somewhere between 190000 and $200,000 of traffic mitigation from leads, 40000 or so from a project a few years ago, and then 154000 we just got from the bike here. So we, sort of wanted, we started the conversation how to keep them off the process for prioritizing that. By Ted suggesting doing a neighborhood meeting or doing, you know, someone from planning, someone from DPW. So Lori Hansen started this process for just that smaller amount two years ago now. Um, but now it's a much bigger amount, so it gives us more options for doing But we also sort of want to consult you all for, for, for what the next steps are. Um, the way council has approved it is we can spend funding for design and planning from this piece without going back to city council, if we have to go back to city council before we can spend any bricks and mortar. So I guess, you know, the question is, does it make sense to do a neighborhood meeting in Leeds soon with someone from DPW and someone from planning or just some other process? You don't want to is there anyone who may represent Leeds or has any thoughts on this? Or any other, any other members of the commission? I represent Leeds. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think it's a great idea to do a, a, a neighborhood uh, meeting, and I would bet that we have a, the vice president of the Leeds Civic Association here, and a number of members of the Leeds Civic Association that they would be in favor as well. Yeah. We'll bring it up at our September 9th meeting. Okay. okay. We did have a discussion this morning at the, uh, the, the committee meeting, and there was a little bit of concern that there have been meetings in the past that were not well attended, I think though that we have much more aggressive mechanisms than we used to have to bring in community um, participation. So I, I think that it would be a worthwhile thing that we get better turn up. I'm not sure about this, but I'm just the idea could be that you're having a meeting needs on the bridge, the DPW's there, 
some of us will be there. That may be enough meat to consider in one meeting, but because it's the bridge, that would bring out a lot of people. And I don't know if we could use it to piggyback this topic on it or not, but that's one possibility. Just to reiterate something that we did discuss at the meeting this morning, uh, there were uh, a number of, as, as everybody in this room knows who's there, um, there were a number of different possible projects we discussed, uh, an off-ramp rail trail, an off-ramp from the rail trail, uh, the bridge, the, the hotel bridge, um, a, a sidewalk along Route 9, Florence Street, Front Street, um, issues about kids walking to leave school. And uh, Wayne, you made it clear every time that there would be a, uh, there's a criterion, which is that uh, the 200, th most of the $200,000 has some strings attached. It can't just be any project in Leeds. Uh, it has to be shown that the source of the money uh, is connected in some way to the, the benefit that is occurring. And uh, that, for instance, that it would be a bit of a stretch for the bridge, even though we all want the bridge, and maybe we would all say, everything else being equal, that the bridge is the number one priority. But that's a little more complicated. And maybe it can be demonstrated that the bridge is, is a valid use. Because our, the one clause I want you, wanted you to say was because the bulk of that money is coming from the Route 9 construction project. Okay. Any other discussion? Uh, just for the record, Ms. Ms. Stevens, are you saying that you, you hope to discuss, have this meeting on September 9th? Or you no, we have a League Civic when? Association meeting on the 9th where we'll figure out a date okay. that would work. Got it. Thank yeah. you very much. Um, we try and do this final agenda item. There's nothing else on this one. The final agenda item, um, mostly, is South Street, South Main Street. Um, the resident, um, um, I think he's a resident of Ward 5, um, talked to me and also talked to Council Murphy about an issue that I believe has come to this commission in the past. Um, and it's, it's simply painting a line down South Main Street um, for the purposes of so traffic flow and safety. And is this something that this commission is familiar with? Was it was traffic calming number 13. I'm sorry? It was traffic calming uh, application number 13. Okay. And that's one of the recommendations that came out of it. It was painting um, yellow lines on the street. And now we have traffic calming money for capital improvements. Okay. So it's the plan to pay a line down the street? I will make it a plan. Would you? Yeah. Um, wait, God bless. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think most studies show that when you add a yellow line, speeds go up a little bit, not down. So I, I think we should look carefully before we jump to the conclusion that maybe the yellow line is going to pop down. James, we were all on board, you know, until you had to ascend. <laughs> no, that's a good point. I mean, I don't, what do you, what do we? Well, we could look at the lane width or the width of South Main Street. It might be 22 foot wide and take up a double yellow line and being a foot. And it narrows the lines by four. It narrows the lines, but it also gives people this, the, the false sense that this is a faster road. And, and for whatever psychological reason is, the studies that I'm familiar with show speed more, which is the opposite of what we want to do. And I, I think the psychology is if there's not a yellow line, then you have to negotiate it and a greater sense of visual friction. What then is the purpose of, of, of just to play devil's advocate, what's the purpose of painting lines on any road? We can remove lines from roads and slow traffic. Uh, when it's high volume, it just uh, demonstrates that it's two way and you're not supposed to be on the left side. If it's low volume, you know, you're less likely to, to have oncoming traffic. Okay. Well, I mean, then again, it seems like it, it went through a process and the recommendation was to paint the line. And we, we don't get, would we even have the authority to controvert that recommendation? This, point. this is a summary of events, and I'm not sure. You have to go back a couple years and look at um, what came to this committee and what we voted to do and not to do. Now, if I remember right, there was a summary that Alex passed out two meetings ago, mm -hmm. three meetings ago, that might have that on there. Recommendation. I feel a little uncomfortable just because somebody raised it that they were going to pull one out of the list because mm -hmm. there there are lots of line painting projects mm -hmm. in that list or things at that scale. 
I mean, I'm happy that I think we will have some money to work with. I don't think you're going to find ones that have this low of a cost. Okay. But I think it is a good point that we ought to follow the scoring yeah. mechanism that's built into the application process. Well, this is this is a fairly old one. It ranked number nine out of fourteen as of two thousand thirteen. So we have to look at the updated list from the out uh, distribution and see where it sits there. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Would, would you, in consultation with Alex, be sure. able to find that information? Um, I have it here. It's number thirteen. Yes. Uh, it's uh, total rank is about uh, so the total point status is on hold. It doesn't have the rank, but just the total points. So there are at least one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen projects ahead of it. Well, I mean, my preference is to follow the procedure that we ought to follow with regards to this today. But then again, I mean, well, I, I, it would be great if the DPW could make a determination about whether or not to proceed now based on where it falls in the, in the ranking. I mean, if it moves up because it's been on there for so long and because now it's money to do it, then it, then it moves up. Right. All right. Well, for today, thank you very much. For today, should we put this on agenda for next month or shall we just follow up offline about it? I'm willing to do whatever the DPW's prep is on that. All right. We'll, we'll take a look at that. <laughs> Actually, I'll, I'll right. Don't worry. This will only take an hour or more and we'll be done. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, any new business? So a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Anyone's too tired to decide? Second. All right, all in favor? Aye.